everyone keep clapping. Come on. <laughs> Fuck. My God, seriously. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's the weirdest fucking place I've ever done stand up in my life, right? It's enough mirrors here to start a sexual revolution. I'm pumped about it. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Excellent. You can go back to sleep now. I'm sorry. All right, guys. Well, I celebrated my birthday recently. So in the wake of that crippling depression, I uh, realized how much cake is an inappropriate amount of birthday cake to eat. That was the entire birthday cake, turns out. Yeah. If you're getting your birthday cake out of the refrigerator, and you look at all the plates in your cupboard, and you go, nah, you've made a grave mistake. Take it from me. Just wish my ex-girlfriend could see me now, right? Empty tray where a birthday cake used to be. Looks like someone finally finished something they started. Didn't they, Abigail? <laughs> oh man, so my mom, she planned this barbecue for my birthday party. And uh, you guys know when you get to that age and you're like, my parents are so dumb, they don't know anything and I know everything. And then you get a little older and you're like, wow, I was actually the dumb one, I don't know shit. And they know, they, know, they really had it right. I'm at that age now where I'm actually like, oh no, they were the dumb ones actually, now that I think about it. They're pretty dumb, I'm not much better. Most people are just kind of dumb, that's how it works I think, <laughs> in life. Like, not sling blade dumb, right? <laughs> like, middle school reading level dumb. She called... <laughs> he gets it. Stromboli gets it. Come on. <laughs> I love that guy. I love him so much. All right, so she calls me up on Saturday, and she's like, Jeremy, barbecue's canceled. I'm like, whoa, what happened? What's going on? And she's like, ugh, he's just bugging me so much, ugh. I'm like, what? I'm like, your father, he's just bugging me so much, ugh. I'm like, you're a 51-year-old woman who raised three kids. What could he possibly be doing to you right now that's bugging you so bad? Put him on the phone. Hello? Yeah, hey, Dad, what's going on? What's the deal with, oh, I didn't do anything. Okay, all right, no, no one's accusing you of anything. I didn't even touch her, whoa! <laughs> Okay, creepy. That's really creepy. I don't know. I, no one said anything about... They were saying so much dumb, immature stuff. Like, I completely forgot to ask them if I could borrow money. Like... <laughs> it was wild. So if you're anything like me, you spend a lot of time at the bank trying to talk your way out of overdraft charges. <laughs> yeah. I walked in the other day and I was like, uh... Someone stole my debit card. And they were like, do you have any idea who did it? And then I was like, some nerd. Not my strongest work, especially since I was the one wearing a Comic-Con t-shirt at the time, which was not only the place I overdrafted, but the particular item in which I overdrafted with. So that's a real hard sell to the guy at the bank. I can honestly say that I had a better chance of getting what I wanted shirtless, and I can't say that very often. So don't feel bad for me. Feel bad for the guy across the desk who had to deal with me. This poor guy like immediately launched into like the most pathetic like stepdad tone of voice I've ever heard. It was like a half-hearted lecture that with no commitment that trailed into a story about himself, like stepdads tend to do. I was like, look, branch manager Joseph, you're not my real father, so don't, don't even try. If you were him, you'd be throwing some money at this problem right now, so let's. <laughs> Let's get that straight. <laughs> so I have a real hard time getting up in the morning. Um, my girlfriend, she's just like amazing at like saying the right combination of words to me that just gets me up, out of bed, dressed, on my way to work. Seriously, nothing says good morning like I'm pregnant. That <laughs> is the penultimate motivator. I wish she could get me up every morning like that. It's just amazing. No, but seriously, pregnancy scares are the worst, guys. They're the absolute worst in the whole world. I wish we could all go through them, just so we could all see what we're made of together, you know? Yeah. It turned out to be a false positive pregnancy test, so I've never been so excited to see science fail before in my life. That was, 
<laughs> that was a new, yeah. The box read 99% accuracy. It's good to be in the 1% of something in my yeah. life. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sex isn't easy after a pregnancy scare. I'll tell you that, too. Like, we just walk around the house now like two apathetic gunslingers, just like, look, I have it, but I'm not going to use it. I don't even think this thing is loaded anymore. I took the bullets out. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's like getting back in the ring after you killed a guy. It's like, I love to box, but at what cost, you know? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a father. I'm barely a boyfriend. Like, it's, it's, I'm very distrusting of relationships. I've been cheated on so many times in my life. Like, and by one person in particular, many times. Like, cheat on me once, shame on you. Cheat on me with most of the people I know, no shame at all. That's just impressive. <laughs> How did you get them all to do that to you? That's crazy. Was there like a group on? Like, what's the deal? <laughs> I mean, I guess we had a situation worked out where like she could sleep with whoever she wanted as long as I paid for everything, so. Oh. She made that sound a lot better when she said it. My girlfriend now, though, is so sweet. She's like, I would never cheat on you. I would never do anything like that to you. Like, don't worry. And I'm like, well, don't sell yourself short. Like, keep working out. Like, you'll meet the right guy eventually. Like, <laughs> it's a numbers game, so this doesn't have to be forever. <laughs> um, I was raised very religious, so that made Halloween's awful. Like, Halloween and religion just don't go together very well. Um, my mom still let me dress up for Halloween, but I had to be, like, one of three different people. I could pick one of three different costumes. Noah, Moses, and Elijah. Which meant Noah and Moses, because I don't know who the fuck Elijah is, okay? <laughs> like, and Noah and Moses are, like, the same costume. It's just a brown robe and an itchy gray beard that you glue to your face and walk around your trailer park in shame. That's the costume. <laughs> just knocking on strangers' doors like, trick or treat, what are you supposed to be, a monk? No, I'm Noah. Why? I don't want to talk about it. And, like, <laughs> that's your Halloween. You're walking your sister around who looks like Mary Magdalene, which is like an Eastern European widow. That's the costume. <laughs> just marching around. And this went on for many years, okay? Until one year, I came upon a cul-de-sac with some kids my age down at the base. There was a Wolverine, a Darth Vader, and a Spider-Man. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. These kids are so cool. This is like my dream super team right here. I'm nervous. I start approaching. I'm like, just don't ask me who I am. Just don't ask me who I am. Of course, Spider-Man goes, hey, who are you supposed to be? I'm like, shit. But then Darth Vader rips off his mask and goes, what are you, stupid? He's obviously Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Yeah. I could just lie? I didn't know that. I've been lying ever since. All right, I got one more and I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, a lot of my friends are into music, Brett, He's, he's, he's a fantastic bass player. In fact, give it a hand for Brett. He's been doing such a good job. The pursuit of music and the pursuit of comedy are equally crazy, but what, what turned me away from music was the idea that like, even if you make it, what are the chances you're gonna make it with a band that you even wanna be in, you know? Like I always think about the bass player of Nickelback. Did he want to be the bass player of Nickelback? He probably wanted to be in that like funk fusion band that he started and was just paying the bills with some Nickelback on the side. Now he's locked in like a golden prison of like having to perform live every night, like making the world slightly worse with every strum of his bass. <laughs> Performing for like an ocean of like mouth breathers, like. <laughs> Whatever it is that frat guys and juggalos do, like that's their fan base, right? Just that offspring. Like the poor guy has like millions of dollars and no one to share it with. Like his friends and family have disowned him long ago. <laughs> 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 he 
he can't even get laid after a show. Like, he can't even take a girl out of the audience and, like, take her back to the van because that's the type of girl that would sleep with the bass player of Nickelback. <laughs> His standards aren't high, but they're not that low, right? <laughs> Guys, my name is Jeremy Schmidt. Thank you so much for having me.